Okay, today we're going to talk about literary devices and using them to add some style to your writing. So a lot of what we're talking about in this presentation comes from William T. Fitzgerald's chapter, Writing with Force and Flair. Uh, some of it comes from just some general background information I have about literary devices. So, let's think about using figurative language in your own writing. Fitzgerald's essay makes a case for figurative language as indispensable to effective writing, and he wants to show us how we can write with force and flair. One thing that a writer can do is to whatever they're embarking on writing a certain type of writing, a certain genre, like a diary entry, an obituary, an essay, a memoir, a research paper, an annotated bibliography, an interview. What is a really smart thing to do is gather some samples of similar documents as to the one that the writer wants to write. Fitzgerald calls this analysis and imitation and he likens it to collecting flowers and kind of pressing them. So I like that metaphor that he uses. Another thing to do is to think of different ways to write the same thing to get ideas. So the old fashioned term for this is copia, which translates to plenty. And um, to quote from Fitzgerald, in contemporary approaches to writing and writing instruction, a certain economy of expression leaves many rhetorical options on the table. In other words, sometimes the professor will ask for conciseness, but conciseness isn't always the most effective way to say something. Many of us have internalized values of brevity and efficiency that discourage letting our words run wild. But writing with a feel for figures encourages strategies of copia, plenty, that is, having more things to say and more ways to say a thing. The most famous account of copious writing was composed 500 years ago by Dutch scholar Erasmus in his popular textbook of 1512, De Copia. Erasmus championed stylistic fluency to achieve an abundant style or recommended a valuable exercise. Write a sentence in many, many ways. As an example, Erasmus offers 109 variations, all in Latin, on a base sentence. Your letter pleased me mightily. To reach that high number, Erasmus employs a wide range of synonyms missive or epistle for letter, delighted for pleased, but also many figures of speech, chiefly tropes that substitute one word or phrase for another. These include metaphor. Your communication poured vials of joy on my head. Synecdoche, substituting part for the whole. Your lines, for entire letter, conveyed to me the greatest joy and metonymy associated things. To be sure, your letter delighted my spirits. Another instance of metonymy refers to the hand that wrote the letter. I was in no small measure refreshed in spirit by your grace's hand. Erasmus also uses the interesting figure of letotis, a kind of understatement by negation. Your epistle afforded me no small delight in our course, Go Figure, this is a course Fitzgerald teaches, we experimented with producing 50 to 100 variations on base sentence, trying to use as many figures as we could. Try this and there's no question you will learn the ins and outs of writing by performing these sentence sit-ups. Again, that's copia, plenty. And I do want to apologize for all my mispronunciations with these uh, words here and there that I'm, I don't use in your everyday speech. More examples from Erasmus. Your brief note refreshed my spirits in no small measure. I conceived a wonderful delight from your pages. Your lines conveyed to me the greatest joy. 
at your words a delight of your ordinarily kind came for me. As a result of your letter, I was suffused by an unfamiliar gladness. Your communication poured vials of joy on my head. The perusal of your letter charmed my mind with singular delight. Okay, away from Erasmus. Another figure of speech or literary device is alliteration. Alliteration is repeating the same sound in successive words. A naughty nap, a cuddly cat, a gorgeous garden. Anaphora is a repetition of word at the beginning of a phrase or sentence. I believe, I believe that all humans are created equal. I believe everyone should have the same I believe in equality. And in metabolism, to turn about, to change directions. Eat to live, don't live to eat. Anastasis, repetition of a word in an opposite meaning. I wasted time and now time wastes me. Dialogismus. Speaking in another person's character. He will say to me, You are not worth the paper you are written on, woman. Hyperbole. Exaggeration. There are a million reasons I won't do that for you. Isocolon. Of the same length, using phrases or sentences that are of the same length, together for effect. My day in court. Justice is served. Latotus, denial of the contrary. I am not unhappy you have visited. It is no small delight you are in class. Metonymy, change of name, naming an aspect of something to stand in for the thing itself. Suit for business executive. White House for administration. Metaphor. Lightness at the word or concept level, changing a literal meaning word to a word with an analogous meaning. The smoke curled, purred, and pawed its way out of the chimney. Oculotatio, emphasize something by seeming to pass over it. I won't waste your time by talking at length about all the contributions Sam has made. Like I won't tell you about when Sam saved a forest. I won't tell you about when Sam wrote a book about how beautiful forests are. I won't tell you about Sam's award from the National Society of Foresters, etc., etc. I will not dwell here on the 20 books and the 30 articles Professor X has written, nor his 40 years as D, and so on and so on. Personification giving li living human qualities to something that is not living in human. The ice covered her face with frozen tentacles that curled their puckering and shriveled protrusions over her eyes. Epipexis, asking questions in order to criticize. Is that what you're wearing? Are you late every day? Have you ever learned to write properly? Eucharistia, giving thanks. First, I'd like to thank all of you for attending tonight's session. I'd especially like to thank Jane Smith for her contributions to the presentation. I want to thank Bill Jones for setting up the lighting on the, on the stage. I want to thank, and so on and so on. Holly Gatotan, repetition of words with different endings but the same root. I was undecided how to become decisive in my decision-making processes. Simile, one thing is likened to another. My love was like a red, red rose. He hung from the tree like a diseased fruit. Synecdoche, I cannot say this. Synecdoche, substitution of a part for a whole or vice versa. All hands on deck. Rhetorical questions. Questions that do not expect an answer. Am I not a woman? Swagma, a kind of ellipsis in which one word, usually a verb, governs several congruent words or clauses to tie together. He lost his keys and his 